Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to interview Ryan from High Carb Regenerator. His YouTube is so awesome. I really love it. I love how he's so real and down to earth. Um, and um, his transformational story is really, really exciting for me. And I'm very, very curious about all these different ups and downs also that you've been going through. I'm so excited to get to know you better. Uh, welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit more about how you first started getting into uh, a weight loss, like, a, or or trying to get a little fitter? Like, what prompted you to do that? Uh, I'll give you the short version because it kind of started back in the '80s. I was uh, I was always the fat kid uh, in school, and back in the '80s, if you were the fat kid, like you were the only one. There was everybody else was skinny, um, and so I kind of noticed that. I'm like, why am I the only? And it's it was kind of funny too because I had so many friends. My mom was really into feeding us healthy. Like nothing was really processed. Nothing was like there was no Chef Boyardee. There was none of that in our house. But all my friends who ate that way were skinny. And I'm like, I don't I don't understand. I don't understand this. So I kind of went through my childhood uh, like that and into my early teens. And my best friend at that time, I also have a deviated septum. So if you hear me like, you know, like really breathing and it's really humid out today. <laughs> oh, I'm, ha I'm struggling a bit. But um, my my best friend's father was a bodybuilder comp uh, competitor. Like he was always ripped. He was always in shape. Yeah, he worked a factory job. He was always working on his car. You know, he had he had the you know that I don't know that everything that you know you kind of want type thing. And he had some weights in the basement. So my buddy and I started uh, lifting at, at around twelve or thirteen, and that's kind of when it started. So like ninety two or ninety three, somewhere in that range, is uh, when I started. And it's kind of been that way ever since, uh, you know, it's, it's been a, a long journey. Now I was never really over overweight. I was like maybe 10 pounds overweight, mm -hmm. but over the years of doing diets and trying to count calories and all the fads and everything like that, that is, is, uh, what had, had gotten me over 400 pounds at, at one point. And yeah, so that's kind of, it kind of started from birth, really. I was always kind of a little bit bigger uh, than everybody else. And it drove me nuts, especially, I mean, back in the eighties, I don't know if anybody's watching this is from the eighties. I mean, if you were a little overweight, you were the only one in your class. So that's, uh, that's kind of when it, where it started. Wow. That's so interesting. And that's so interesting how you not, uh, how you mentioned that, that you started getting really um, like overweight when you started dieting. So, so after dieting, it happened actually. Yeah. I, I mean, I look at pictures of myself back when I thought I was fat uh, back in like the 95, 96 range. There's not a ton because, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have these things sitting around. We didn't have yeah cell phones so you actually had film and a camera and everything like that so yeah, there wasn't a ton yeah. of it but uh when i do look at, at at pictures of myself i'm like man i really was maybe 10 pounds 15 at best overweight i <laughs> mean if i had come on to this lifestyle back then i mean i'd have been ripped you know not that that's actually a goal of mine but it's never really been i don't really care like i i i don't it's not like that big of a deal but had I known about this and actually been able to uh, accept it, because at that time I thought you needed meat, you needed you know protein and all that uh, to to get where you wanted to go. Meanwhile, it never really helped. Yeah, yeah. So to when you say if I would come to this lifestyle, you mean high carb. Um. Some variation of it. Yeah. I mean, because I know McDougal, I mean, I would not have done raw back then. There's no way. But uh, I would have definitely done like a variation of like a McDougal starch solution. I mean, the maximum weight loss was out at that time. And if I had to come across or his 12, 
think it's 12 day or something like that program. If I had come across that, I mean, cause I had tried everything else. I had tried the Atkins. I tried keto. I had tried uh calorie counting. You, know? you see these little charts in the uh, charts in the, the uh, muscle magazines. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you think, you think that they know what they're talking about, but they don't, they're just ads. And, uh, you know, I tried everything and I, I, I think I would have, uh, I, I would have done it because I had come across, uh, Tony Robbins. And he was talking about, this was in the early 2000s. I had come across him and he was talking about at least having 70% of your diet, like raw or greens yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> um, and it planted a seed. I, I, I didn't want to do it. It planted a seed. And a couple of years after I had read this, I actually got certified to be a nutrition coach because I wasn't big in the early 2000s or, tw- you know, early 2000s. It feels like it was yesterday. I don't know. The 2000s, it seems weird. But uh, yeah, so I, I was a nutrition coach. I was coaching people uh, as far as weightlifting goes. And it had planted a seed. And the reason I mentioned my nutrition coach is because it was out of California. And the p- place that did it was actually had an entire section dedicated to uh, vegans, which I didn't know what they were at the time. Uh, and then I'm like, well, you know, how can you build any muscle with with this? Because I had been, you know, I guess brainwashed my entire life with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, the high carb plant based lifestyle is you feel that would help you so much more. And uh, uh, you mentioned the keto and all that. So you feel, do you feel like these other diets in the end made you actually gain a lot of weight? Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Which diets and how Um, they made you gain weight? I don't know if the diet itself made me gain weight. Uh, I think, yeah, I think any diet will work. Mm-hmm. But it's how much of the how much of the going bald, how much of the sleepless nights, how much of the, you know, smelling terrible can you take? You know, <laughs> if you're on a on a keto, you know, yeah, like how much yeah. of that I, it's not really symptoms. I don't know what you would call it, but it's like what happens to everybody that goes on keto it, eventually yeah. it might take years. It might take years. And then you don't put two and two together that it's the diet. So they keep going with the diet. Meanwhile, they look terrible. And, you know, it's just, it's not great. So was it the diet? I don't know if it was a diet in and of itself, but the lack of carbs on the keto and or the carnivore diet is probably what caused it, you know, and that's the binges. Because I don't normally binge. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, like I live, I, I need, my ex needed help. So I told her she could move in with me and she's German and she's always got her cakes and she's, and she's vegan, but she's always got her cake. She's always got her, uh, just, she doesn't care. She doesn't care. She uses oil in cooking. She's, you know, th- the size of my, my finger doesn't really matter. You know, she's a little heavy on the bottom, but I mean, who doesn't like that? And like, um, it really doesn't matter to her. She's, she's got all this stuff upstairs and I don't, I don't really have cravings. You can, I can literally have a box of vegan donuts right in front of me right here. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat it. I don't really have that. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I did on, on keto and I, the early part, early days of keto, I lost a ton of weight, a ton of weight. Mm-hmm. I remember I started in like October or November of 99 I don't even know if it was called keto at the time. It might've been called like a variation Atkins. of Atkins or, so, but yeah. it wasn't Atkins. Atkins was like, you know, have Sausage bacon and be something. <laughs> yeah. It was like eat bacon and drink, drink grapefruit juice. That yeah. was Atkins in my mind. So I, it wasn't that it was, it was just eating basically broccoli and meat. And then I think once a week, I think on Sunday, I would allow myself to have a yam or a sweet potato. We don't have yams here. A sweet potato. And I, I went on like this for, for a good six or eight months. And I live on the beach. And I remember um, that summer when, when the beach was, you know, we were starting to go to the beach again. I took on my shirt and my body's like, what happened to you? Where, where did you go? I mean, I had lost like half of my body weight, but because my shoulders and my chest and everything are so big, like they're 54 inches. My chest is like 54 inches round. 
I didn't notice it. I didn't really notice it at all uh, until people started pointing it out that we were at the beach. And this went on for a couple of years. And then um, the, the distribution pl place that I worked at, uh, Cheesecake Factory, was starting to put uh, uh, restaurants into our area. And we uh, had some freezer space to lease out. So we leased it out to them. Well, if a box of cheesecakes happened to fall, it we just call it a sample, and then we would try it out. And I I started binging like crazy on these cheesecake factory uh, mm -hmm. cheesecakes because I couldn't take the low carb anymore. I didn't know what it was, so all the weight that I had lost, I had gained back. Uh, probably a year or two into knowing my uh, ex wife at that time or, you know, going to be wife at that time. And her family was very wealthy and they, they never cooked. So I was always going out to eat with them. I was trying to stay true to my keto, but they, you know, they put so much butter and everything <laughs> on, you know, even when you're doing like keto and, and it wasn't a thing back then, everybody thought you were nuts. Everybody still liked their carbs back then. So it was really hard to do, but, uh, the, you know, one thing added to another and I just, I, I gained weight from it. And that's when I found uh, my doctor because I was tanking my uh, testosterone and everything too. And I didn't realize it. I was so tired, like tired all the time. So I went to just my regular doctor, but he had, had like a, su he sub studied or whatever endocrinology when he was in college. So he started testing me for uh, my hormones and he realized that like everything was low. Everything was low. Roma, and low he's like, carb? Uh, yeah, and the low carb. So it kind of spiraled from there because he he was uh, heavily into to weightlifting. That's kind of why I saw, uh, sought him out. And he had these other doctors that uh, would study you for how many calories that you should take in a day and how many you expended. And so he put a program together for me. And I kind of came off keto and I did his program, but I gained weight. Oh, so can I ask uh, that keto part, how long, how many years did you do that? That, that uh, I'm off for, for about 10 years. I did it from 99 to about 09. Ooh. So for 10 years and you feel like all of that was tanking your hormones and, whoa, how did you survive for 10 years on that? I don't know. I don't know. I did. I mean, I'm 43. Most people think I look 30. So it really didn't do that much damage as far as everything else goes. But the weight, uh, I've always been able to carry a lot of weight. But, you know, I, I've also carry a lot of muscle, too. So it's, you know, I don't really notice it. I, I, I don't really notice. It. I can, when I was 405 pounds or 410 pounds or whatever I got up to, I could still fly up a flight of stairs. No problem. It wasn't winded. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I don't notice it. I really don't notice it. And my structure is so big. Even when I've gotten down to 220, 210 or something like that, like when I did, when I went raw, my clothes are the same size. When you think about, about yourself being like at your top overweight, did you feel any discomfort or anything? That... Yeah, I only had... Um, like one or two sets of clothes that would fit. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't, that wasn't great. Uh, that wasn't great. But as far as moving around, no. So you, uh, for t about 10 years, you were on and off on a keto diet um, yeah. or like whatever it was back then, low carb. Um, and then you started noticing that you don't feel so good. You, you were, you had huge cravings. Right. And uh, just yeah, yeah, the cravings would come on and off. And I don't know anybody who does keto that doesn't have the cravings course, come on of and course. off. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. They, they, they hit and <laughs> they hit hard, pretty hard. I mean, I know people who uh, go to like a place that makes pies or something like that. They'll buy a pie and eat the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot of people going through, you know, wow, it's really raining out there, but uh, uh, they'll, they'll really, uh, you know, they go through it pretty, pretty hard. So um, I, I think that's what causes the most issues though, because what are you going to, what are you going to binge on is the issue. You're probably not going to binge on potatoes or, you know, bananas or something like that. You're probably going to binge on, uh, I don't know, like pie or in my case, it was always pie. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so uh, 
then you went on on some special diet that doctor created for you it was like just like calories counting calories right and you gained weight on that you said i did yeah um i think it was a 40 percent carbs 30 percent protein and 30 percent fat oh, type yeah. situation yeah, some, some somewhere in that range i think it's called a zone diet zone, or something zone, like that yeah. It was better than the keto. I felt a little better, but I mean, my weight really, I mean, it was, it was, it was bad. I mean, by the time I actually did get married, I looked, I, I was just, I was way overweight. Mm -hmm. So how much would you say you gained on this diet? I don't know. Um, I don't know what I was going in. I was probably 215 and 96 or something like that. So it was, I honestly, I don't know. I think more, that have you, what's that? Was it was it more than like six or eight pounds? Was it more than that? Probably. Okay. I didn't really weigh myself a lot. You know? Yeah, because I, I was I, wondering. Sometimes you can gain weight, but it's just uh, like a, a glycogen in your muscles. You know. Oh like, yeah. It was more than likely more, more than, than that. It, it probably was. I you know. I, the, as far as keeping track of weight, I never really, I never really did it that much. Okay. So, I think the heaviest I ever got at that point was like two thirty-five or somewhere in that range. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and what happened next after this? After what? After, after what you gained the weight on that uh, zone that. I tried keto again, you know, I, I, and I, I'm like, well, I'll go back keto hardcore and it, it had some effect it was it was nowhere near as good as the first time um at all and then uh, mm -hmm. when did you find the plant-based did you find plant-based diet first or or you no i tried seco again and i tried keto again a couple more times and then uh i went through a, an extreme binge and that's when all the weight came on so after keto uh, the I think the third or fourth time I tried it, that is when I went I went into severe depression, and I started drinking for the first time in my life. Um, I was like twenty nine or thirty. I started drinking for the first time in my life. I mean, I was drinking a lot. I was I was actually sneaking uh, beer into work. I was eating those pre made lasagnas and Oreos. This went on for a good year. And that's when I went from did, probably two. Did something happen in your life that you got uh, depressed? Got you depressed? No, I don't. I don't know. I don't. Is it I don't because know. of the weight? I don't really know what caused it. I I just remember in two thousand and ten or late two thousand nine. I started wondering why I was lifting weights. Like I I don't like competing. I have no interest in it. I'm like, why am I doing this? And I started really getting depressed. I'm like, I'm like, I'm wasted my whole life in the gym. Like I, I, I sacrificed so much, putting so much effort into losing weight and um, it, it not really working that well. So I'm like, screw it. I don't really care anymore. I've never, I've never done alcohol before. So I figured, you know, why not, why not try it? <laughs> oh. Lily woke up. It's okay. She's gonna just nurse here. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, it's just it, it was probably about five or six different things. And I started drinking. I started taking alcohol into work. I started just buying those like uh, pre-made lasagnas mm -hmm. and Oreos and stuff like that. And it just it, it got to a point. And then my my hormones were really bad. I started going back to an endocrinologist. <laughs> my testosterone was like really low and it just it got to a point i think i uh, the highest weight that i saw on the scale was 405 but i'm actually pretty sure i got heavier than that and that is kind of when i found the raw vegan thing um okay. yeah i start i started i i went into it a little bit i you know i had a i i had a banking job and I had to go back and forth to philly and there was this guy arnold at uh, one of the stations uh, he runs uh, runs a like a raw vegan cafe, and he, he comes uh -huh, up to me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's know. like, uh, you know, you're pretty fat. 
I said, I know. And uh, he's like, I, I can help you. And he started, uh, you know, he gave me a green smoothie and I went back to his shop and he started learning some stuff. And uh, at first I went, uh, you know, vegetarian. I still was having milk in the diet. And then I'm like, why am I doing this milk thing? And it, it was weird because the, the month that I dropped milk, I lost 50 pounds ish in that range in one month. Ah. It was, it was nuts. I was actually getting a little concerned. Uh, and then I went full on, uh, raw vegan. I, I did a lot of juices in the beginning and bananas and watermelon. And I was buying dates by the case and yeah. Uh, and then I, 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 I left that banking job and I didn't have like crazy money coming in anymore. Uh, so I had to back off and I stopped doing the juices because the juices were costing me a, a decent amount of money. And actually I felt so much better not doing the juices and I was actually losing weight way better off juices, which is why I, I'm not into juicing. Arnold tells people juicing is the absolute waste of time not to do it. <laughs> and I have to agree. I think it's just an absolute waste of produce. I have no idea why people do it. So I don't advise people to do juicing. And I think, you know, if you see people on these long-term juice fast, they kind of created their own eating disorder. And I just, I, I try to stay away from it. That continued for uh, probably from 2011 to 2014. And I had lost, I had gotten down to about 225 or, you know, so at that point. So how much about approximately you released? Well, I went from uh, the number that the last number, like I said, on the scale was 405. And I got down to about 225 doing raw. Huh. So whatever that is, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. It's, a, you know, it's 180 ish pounds or somewhere somewhere that's, in that range that's amazing <laughs> yeah uh and then i took a, another i took a post office job uh, and i was working like 12 14 hour days mm -hmm. and i was having a really hard time uh with the fruit and everything because i couldn't get down to where i was buying the fruit from so i had to start adding starches in so i did i did gain a little bit of weight from that just because i was combining a lot of uh, avocado with uh potatoes and that's such a bad combination, I think. Uh, so I gained a little bit of weight from that. Um, I, I had been on a decent amount of avocados when I was on the raw diet, though, because at one, if I didn't have avocados in my diet, I was losing almost two pounds a day. Oh, too much. And I'm like, this is way too much. So I was actually eating like four or five avocados a day just to try and uh, like nuts and, and seeds and stuff like that. That's amazing. Try, trying to uh, stop, to, trying to get it to a point where I was only losing a pound a day. And keep in mind, I was eating like seven or 8,000 calories a day. And I was still so losing. How, can you describe how is it possible? How, so what did you eat for to get seven? thousand calories a day yeah i was going through at least a case of dates a week i was going through uh two or sometimes three cases of bananas a week um yeah, but it doesn't add up to six seven thousand still oh it does i mean i did the calculations and you then you add four in front of me? and then you add and then you add four or five avocados into that and a bunch of nuts and everything like that and you're gonna get well, to the with seven, the nuts, eight maybe yeah yeah, yeah, probably with the nuts and avocados. It just with the bananas. Um, yeah, I, I don't. Two cases. I mean, if you if you eat yeah. forty on average, I was eating forty to fifty bananas a day. Forty That's four, bananas. Uh huh. Forty, 40 or 50, fifty bananas. Then I was eating at least a pound, if not two pounds of dates a day. Oh, a day. A day. Two and then pounds I was, of dates a day. Yeah, I mean dates are cheap. I mean, date yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and I get wow. uh, I get dates from California, so they're not dehydrated. They're sweet. They're they're plump. Yeah. They got the water still in them. Yes, yes. And so oh, I, I was crazy. going through those. I don't actually like a lot of fruit. Most fruit I don't like at all. Uh -huh. So I, I I keep it pretty pretty bare bones. I like bananas when they're in a smoothie, but I don't like eating bananas. I like dates uh, just alone, but I hate them in smoothies. I don't really like too many berries. Some some berries I like. Uh, grapes are all right. Uh, oranges maybe, you know, if they're from Florida and they were picked ripe. 
but most fruit I don't really like. So I would still, and watermelons like, you know, top, top tier for me and mangoes are top tier for me, but you know, mango season isn't all year. And so I was doing, you know, the 40 or 50 pounds of, uh, or 40 or 50 bananas a day. And then like almost two pounds a day today. And then I was still like, the weight was just catapulting off me. Mm-hmm. So I added in four or five avocados a day, but this was back, you know, before avocados were real crazy uh, popular. They were like 10 cents a piece back then. Yeah. So it really wasn't costing me a ton of money. Well, I'm curious about bananas. Yeah. Do you uh, are you sure that these bananas were like super super ripe? Like, I mean, gushy. That yeah, I, I know how to I know how to pick a banana. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I yeah. was going through it like eighty to one hundred twenty pounds of bananas a week. You know, they're spotted. I yeah. Well, when they're spotted, it's not necessarily that they're at the peak of ripeness. They might be still a bit starchy. And that starch is uh, resistant, so it 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 can go through very easily. Through the I body. mean, the by the time I eat them, the peel is both mostly brown. But you have to understand that they spray okay. our bananas here in the, this country, so you yeah. don't know when they're ripe or not. Yeah, they don't. Well, when you they don't, when you eat them, are they kind? They were kind of gushy and super sweet. Yeah. Wow. This is very interesting <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, so it, it sounds like this stuff was kind of going through you. I I have no idea. It was 405 pounds, 410 pounds. That's what I was eating. Yeah, because uh, <clears throat> theoretically, like uh, physiologically, it, it shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be losing weight by, by eating seven thousand six to 7,000 calories. Okay. I don't buy into the calorie thing at all. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah. the calorie that's thing what I'm is saying. absolute that's nonsense. It. I well, I agree <laughs> because uh, it's not the calories that we put in our body; it's the calories that actually go in. So for some reason, they were not going in, or not 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 absorbing, or something was going on in there. <laughs> for sure. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I agree know. that uh, it might help someone, like to to count calories. Sometimes it helps. It works. But uh, it, it's not necessarily that it will work because really, like, uh, you can ca- calculate the heck out of it. And in the end of the day, how can you calculate how much you're really burning, how much you're really burning and how much you're really absorbing? It's just impossible. It is impossible. And, you know, the day I met Durian Ryder and Freely, I mean, Durian Ryder that day had eaten, the day I met him uh, had eaten already 72 bananas in, in that day. <laughs> and and he was on a bike ride and he was eating three uh dates per hour plus the 72 i mean so and he, see how skinny he is so i have no idea i i don't know about the absorption i have no idea about any of that yeah that's so interesting all of that it's it's very very eye-opening so it, it's it's extremely interesting uh your story of eating so many calories and still releasing weight is just amazing yeah i'm curious how did you feel like did you enjoy it uh, did you enjoy yourself? not n- not in the beginning no I, okay. I i i was um i was i had i had some worms coming out of me i had parasites coming out of me um yeah. so- I, I was getting some weird headaches and, and stuff like that. And I actually wasn't doing like a juice cleanse or anything like that. I I had this happen to me just with uh, fruit and doing maybe, maybe at most two juices a day, but most of the time I would just do a carrot juice. Um, yeah. So wow. I did start doing more green juices, like probably a year in or something like that. I hated them, so I I stopped doing them. Mm-hmm. Did you have any greens in the beginning when you were eating all these bananas? Yeah, I was doing a, like a, that's where the avocados were going. I would make a salad. Uh-huh. I yeah. actually, I'm not I'm not the biggest, you know, like Arnold says, uh, if it's not yummy to my tummy, I don't eat it. I I really, you know, I'm not the biggest greens fan. Like I don't think we're supposed to eat most of them. I think most of them have inhibitors, especially kale and spinach and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't really think they're human food. Um, so I don't have a ton of greens. I'll do romaine, I'll do like stuff like that, uh, stuff that I grow. 
uh, but I, I don't do a ton. I have done them over the years. Kale, I used to juice quite a bit. I mean, but as soon as kale comes out of the juicer, it already smells decomposed. I mean, look, it smells mm -hmm. terrible. So I don't really trust that at all. Mm -hmm. And how about veggies? How much veggies did you eat? At this time? None. Yeah. Zero. No veggies. Okay. No. Okay. Now, I was doing what he told me to do. He doesn't... He's like, you'd have to eat 20 pounds of veggies to make, uh, you know, to uh, make him anywhere near the amount of calories you need for a day. And he didn't, he doesn't uh, agree with it at all. And he's got like an entire store for, full of walls of pictures of people that he's helped with, you know, get rid of cancer and all that. So I just figured he knew what he was talking about. And he's, he's the one to help me to, to, to lose all that weight. So I just, I did whatever he said, except for the sugar. He told me not to have sugar. And I don't really believe in that at all. I feel like if if you're juicing oranges or something like that, like you're literally just creating uh, sugar. So I, I don't really I don't really buy into that modality. So the the sugar is the only thing that I didn't listen to him on. So you still ate sugar? Is oh that... yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah. I mean, sugar? when I was, I mean, I, I there was there was times I would go through four pounds of sugar a week. Mm -hmm. You were adding that to your smoothies. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. And uh, then, so for how long you've been on, on a raw vegan? I oh. stopped doing raw in, uh, in 2014. Just because I was working so much, I just, I did not have enough time to go buy bananas and doing the ripening. I mean, I was just always exhausted. So I started adding in uh, potatoes mainly. Um I, I gained a little bit of weight, but like I said, that was probably because I was mixing them with avocado. Mm -hmm. I don't think they combine well. Okay. Um, so you started raw vegan lifestyle, uh, or raw vegan diet, at which year was it? Sometime in 2011, it, it officially started. Uh, I, I dabbled in it for a little while, and then uh crazy circumstances we ended up homeless uh so i really and we uh, while we were homeless I, we were paying for the, the to live in this little motel but it only had a fridge that was you know like a really tiny fridge so i really couldn't keep enough i didn't have my juicer i didn't have my blender i didn't have anything with me so i tried to do it as much as i could but uh, it didn't work out <laughs> i mean we we were kind of eating the pizza diet so I gained all the weight back that I had lost on raw. And then I got a really good job uh, a couple months into that. And then we got out of it. And then I had bought uh, a Vitamix and I bought a good juicer. And that's, that's, that's when it really took off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were in it overall for about three years. About three years, yeah. Yeah, and uh, by the end of these three years, what kind you were at which weight approximately? About two twenty, somewhere in there, two twenty five, somewhere in that range. So you lost a lot of weight from before. Yeah, it was like one hundred and eighty pounds. Wow. And uh, after that, you decided to start eating more cooked, and you still stayed plant based, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've I've been plant based since 2011. So what is that? 12 years now. Cool. Yeah, I it was just it was it was just so much easier because yeah. I, I I I kept having bananas going bad, you know, turning into yeah. liquid and fruit fly issues when I was working so much, and she wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend at the time so she wasn't really helping me out with any she actually wanted them gone she did not want bananas in the house at all so i was i was fighting with that situation she's like this is i i want you i want these out of here like yeah, get them out you. of here hours are in the sunroom <laughs> yeah so i was dealing with her because i was keeping like two or three cases of bananas in the kitchen because of we lived in a, an apartment in Philly, I had nowhere really else to keep them. Yeah. So it was kind of a, a combination of working so much and fighting with her over the bananas. And, uh, you know, as soon as they would go even 
remotely, like they would really get sweet. I mean, sometimes she would just throw them out and I'm just like, all right, you know what? I, this is just getting ridiculous. So I, I just, I started adding more like potatoes in because fruit flies don't go after potatoes, you know, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's weird too. Cause they don't go after watermelon, which is why I like to keep a lot of watermelon. Yeah. Uh, during watermelon season but they go after cantaloupe and they go after you know honeydew so i yeah, because it's I, more accessible for this it's time. more accessible yeah i've actually grown all th all all three so i've grown uh, cantaloupe uh honeydew and watermelon cool. it's amazing how hard it is to grow cantaloupe and actually get them for yourself it's crazy. <laughs> you're dealing with the crows. You're dealing with the pests. You're dealing with, I mean, all, I had yeah. to build like these. I tried fences. here too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like, I don't know how people Nails grow these and things. slugs. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's basically a matter of what can I grow that doesn't attract so much uh, fruit flies. I also devised like a little program with uh, paper bags. Uh, if you keep, different stages of bananas and paper bags, you'll actually really get rid of the fruit flies because you, you close the paper bags really tight. So I've, 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 cause the first of my first year That's raw, cool. I lost 800 pounds of bananas to fruit flies. Mm. I, I'm like, I, I didn't know. I didn't even know. I've never dealt with fruit flies before. Mm. And where I, where we were living at the time has a, had a lot of red soil and the red soil really attracts fruit flies like crazy. Mm. So I had to do so many different things. And I, I eventually just like, I'm like, I, I don't feel like, I don't feel like dealing with fruit flies. I don't feel like de dealing with hearing about her yelling at me about the fruit flies and the bananas. And so I eventually just uh, did more of a, like a raw till four type thing. Mm -hmm. And what one. happened then when you started eating more cooked food? I didn't really notice a huge difference. I, like I said, I did gain a, a, a bit of weight. I never noticed an energy difference. Uh, like people claim that they 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 have. Because uh, I, I still kept it pretty simple. Um, but when I did that, when she, when she would bake, because she bakes a lot, that's when I would start eating the baked stuff again. And I think that might have had a little bit to do with the, the weight. Uh, gain but if you go into 2016 when i went mostly raw again i was still eating her cookies and i still lost weight so i don't know it seems like if i hit a, a certain weight it's like at the 250 to 240 mark i can lose weight no matter what i'm eating uh like you know plant-based wise but if i'm over that weight that's when the struggle is is there hmm. you mean over if you if you're more than yeah, if I'm over 250, that's when I notice a, a real struggle with weight loss. But if I'm if I get myself to like the 250 mark, I, I notice that weight comes off. Like I can literally eat the the vegan cookie diet and I'll still lose weight if I'm, you know, if I'm like bouncing on a cellar size or, or riding bike or something like that. That's so interesting. So the the lighter you are, the easier it is for you to. Oh yeah, it just just. I, in 2016, I, I got, I got, I was, I got to about 255, which I really didn't like. And that I've noticed that that weight right there is where I really struggle to get weight off. So I started, I, I cut out the smoothies in 2016 because I thought like they weren't digesting well. And I bought, I and it was, um, it was coming into apple season. It was still watermelon season. And we we're starting to get oranges. So what I did in 2016 at this, well, the whole year I was kind of like just eating fruit. I wasn't really uh, making smoothies and I noticed my digestion like that uh, uh, better, but it's really hard for me to do now because of my situation. So I started doing that and I started uh, just eating fruit, like whenever I wanted it. I didn't, you know, just whenever I was hungry, I would eat fruit. I would have water. Uh, and then for lunch, I would eat half a watermelon at work. and. Uh, then I would have cooked food at night and the weight did start coming off. And then there, there was a woman at work who took an interest in me and she was vegan. And then Sandy, Sandy my ex, uh, they were competing at who could make me more cookies. It was, it was driving me crazy. They were like in competition with each other. And I would, it, cookies are in front of me, you know, like I got to eat them. Right. But the weight was still just coming off. 
coming off like crazy. But then when I moved back here to Cleveland, uh, I had a really long commute. I had a 90 mile commute every morning and every night. And it was, it was just getting, the stress was getting to me. And I, I had to be there at four o'clock in the morning which was, it was ridiculous in the first place. So I had to be there at four o'clock in the morning. I had this 90 mile ride each way. I wasn't eating the entire day. And then I would come home and I would eat just whatever vegan food that I could find. And it, I mean, it, I would, I would go through an entire bag of chips. I would go through, you know, it was, it was getting bad. And so I gained, uh, gained quite a bit of weight back. I had to be there at four o'clock in the morning. So I yeah, had to yeah. leave at like, like, 2 30 ish in the morning from my i mean so i was basically not sleeping i was basically just not eating because uh, i it's it just because by the time all this is done i didn't feel like making anything so i was just yeah. getting whatever vegan uh pre-made stuff that i could find and just throwing it in, you know on the stove and eating it and then going to bed and then starting to cycle over again so i would just take like a four pound bag of oranges to work and then I was taking uh, one of those uh, pre-packed things of rice, and then I would just throw that in there, and that's all I would eat all day. And then I would come home ravenous. Mm -hmm. I just I could never figure out that cycle. And then I finally bit out of that job, but I, th the damage was already done. And honestly, ever since that happened, my brain has been stuck in this, or my body has been stuck in this fight or flight, and uh, I've been trying to figure out how to get it to not be in that that mo mode uh-huh so you still feel the stress oh yeah i still okay. feel it from that i'm like why are you it's just... heavier now than you've been after the row when you were on row oh yeah i'm probably 270 now mm -hmm. okay and you feel yeah. that a lot of that has to do with stress oh i know it is yeah i know it's stress I, I i don't know I don't know what's caused. I don't know a hundred percent what caused it, but I got stuck in that fight or flight like mentality mode and everything. Like I, I can't even take out the garbage now without having to fight myself to like this is just taking out the garbage. It's not a big deal, but my brain just turns everything now into this really big deal. Yeah. So I think uh, what I'm going to be doing going forward is just having bananas all day up into dinner and then having a uh, salad and then having uh, some potatoes. I got to simplify things. I've been trying to make too much like extravagant stuff. I mean, none of it's high fat, but mm -hmm. I just don't think my body can digest it. I think it needs a break. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you been thinking about addressing the stress? Oh, that's kind of I it. have I have done everything I have done meditating I have done I did the cold uh you know I, I live right by the lake and it's cold now so I've done the cold in the cold in the lake I've done I mean I've been this has been years now this has been six years of since I've been in this cycle um I did do a, a 40 days of raw last year and I lost like 25 pounds in the in the 40 days mm -hmm. but the one problem I go through when I'm raw is I freeze all day long. I'm uh -huh. always cold, like ch teeth chattering. Like it, it, I, it could be, I, I mean, it literally will get like a hundred degrees and 99% humidity here. And I'm still like teeth chattering and it's like, it, so it drives me nuts. That, that part uh, absolutely drives me nuts. It never went away. I never got used to it. So that part never went away. So th that I, I I was craving uh, potatoes or rice. I mean, it's nothing real, you know, severe. I mean, if you look at, you know, China or Japan or something, they eat like when they were eating 90% rice, they never had disease. They never had, they lived, you know, like to a hundred. They never had any of that kind of stuff. So I know rice isn't like a, a huge boogeyman, but I was craving it. And it, honestly, as soon as I had the rice, I, I, I didn't gain weight, but I did. I wasn't losing weight anymore. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I In the beginning of the raw vegan lifestyle, I also had this uh, issue with being cold. And then um, uh, it, it went over like maybe for the first year or year and a half. 
and um, now I'm I'm really warm, <laughs> and I think I'm more warm than I used to be before. So it it's really there are so many different aspects of lifestyle that go into these results or how we feel, um, and uh, of course stress, like you mentioned, and uh, also I feel that the type of raw diet, how we eat, it also affects uh, the way we feel. Mm. But um, yeah, it's very interesting. I I am so grateful that I could hear all the details. Well, not all the details, but a lot of yeah. details about your story. It gives me a lot of food for thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see uh, where you'll be going from now. And um, uh, what is your primary like um, way of sharing your your journey? I see a lot on on your YouTube channel. Um, yeah, probably YouTube, uh, Instagram. I, honestly, I forget to post on there. Mm-hmm. Like really, I I would I would like to actually post way more on Instagram, but I always I just always forget. I'm like, oh man, I forgot. You know, like, so yeah. Yeah. So YouTube probably is is definitely the yeah uh, you you're posting a lot on YouTube and uh, it's like uh, it's like uh, it's so interesting that uh, you can be kind of like your friend when you follow you I mean you can follow your journey almost every day <laughs> every week yeah right yeah it's, it's very interesting and uh, I'm excited to see where, yeah yeah I, I definitely going to be. Definitely going to be simplifying. I mean, I, I've got 140 pounds of uh, of um, potatoes in the other room, so I'm not going to let them go to waste. <laughs> you know, because we're coming to the end of the growing season. The har- it's uh, it's the harvest right now. So I went to I actually buy them from the farms. Like I, I like going to the farms and, and buying them. They, they didn't come from a store. So they they have that like vibration still from and they still have a little bit of dirt on them and everything like that. So I, I'm going to be using those. I'll see how this goes. I think, you know, like I said, I'm going to do bananas, uh, salad and uh, potatoes every day. Uh, I'll see how that goes. If it, if it doesn't get where I want it to go, I might go raw for like three months next year, like to start off the year or something like that. But I, I'm, I, I don't, I don't push raw. I know you do. I push, I don't you know, push raw. but uh, <laughs> I just enjoyed but, myself. Yeah. But uh, I I say do whatever you the bare minimum that you can do you know to to get where you want to be you know because right. when I was fully raw going to parties and everything was such a pain so I I kind of like having a little bit of cooked in there just so I don't like throw up in a corner if I have cooked af- you know like cooked food <laughs> after like six or seven months of being raw you know so I don't want any of that going on but we will see what happens yeah okay. That's exciting. Thank you so much. No uh, problem. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens next. And yeah, I'll be watching so am I, you. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to, to mention your channel too. So they know. Oh, where yeah. It's just high carb regenerate. You can see it down here in the corner uh, and right underneath me, by my shoulder here. High carb <laughs> regenerator on uh, Instagram and YouTube. That's all the only ones I've got. Yep. That's it. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ryan. It no was problem. A pleasure to have you. No, thanks for having me. <laughs>